Welcome to Angular Tutor. This is Atem, and today we're going to talk about Tollboots. Why Tollboots? Because Tollboots have an interesting technology, license plate recognition. Nowadays, most of the Tollboots are automated. Your car has a transponder, and the Tollboot recognizes your car by talking to the transponder and builds you for the top. What if your car doesn't have a transponder? The Tollboot can still recognize your car. This time what they do is they take a picture of your car, they find the license plate, read the license plate, find where you live and send you the bill. But I suppose there's no real people who look at those pictures and manually find the license numbers. Computers do that and they use some simple image processing techniques and today we're going to explore those techniques. So let's start by looking at this simple app. So I created this very simple app to explore what's happening when computers are trying to recognize license plates looking at pictures. Let's start by selecting a license plate picture. So let's use this one. So it's a colored image or it's an RGB red, green, blue image. This license plate image has a background picture in addition to the license plate characters in the middle, it has the name of the state, the star, the motto of the state, and our algorithm should be able to recognize the license plate characters and not get confused by everything else. So the first thing we do is change this colored image into a grayscale image. And from that grayscale image, now in grayscale, we don't have red, green, and blue values. We only have one value per pixel, and that value is between 0 and 255. Now we're going to change that grayscale image into a black and white image. Black and white image is just an image where each pixel can be either 1 or 0. And depending on your system, you know, 1 may mean white and 0 may mean black. So we can go to black and white. Now we have just black and white pixels. And in this case, we chose white as my characters. So white means important information and black means no information. Now my computer program needs to recognize where these characters are. And that's what we call region of interest. And once I find where that region of interest is, I can find the single characters. And from those single characters, I can find what letter those characters are. So what's happening underneath? How do we do this? You know, how things may change, what things are important in these algorithms. So let's start with going from grayscale to black and white. So what's happening underneath is we're creating a histogram of these grayscale values of the image. As we said, each pixel has a value between 0 and 255. And then we take a histogram of that. And we say, we set a threshold. Let's say, we say if the value of the pixel is less than my threshold value, in this case 150, I want that pixel to be white. So this is a little bit different because what I'm looking here is in the grayscale image, my letters are dark colored. So I want those dark colored pixels to turn into white pixels in my black and white image. That's why I choose this threshold such that any value below the threshold, any value that's darker than my threshold value, is going to be white. And any value higher than my threshold value will be black. So let's see what happens if I take it to the extreme. If I put my threshold to the maximum value 255, everything's white. On the other way, everything's black. So in between, there's a sweet spot. And I'm going to say 150. Once I do that, now I need to figure out where this region of interest is. And this is how I do it. So this time, I look at the number of white pixels 
per row. If a row has more pixels, then there's a higher chance that there are characters or interesting features in that row. And this red line shows the number of white pixels in the corresponding row. So I can set a threshold and say, if the number of whites is more than this threshold, that row is interesting. So if I put my threshold all the way here, the only interesting rows are these ones. As you can see, my region of interest is there. If I take it all the way to the down here, then there are no interesting features. But somewhere in between, I can find that this is the interesting region. We'll go into the details of that when we look at the code. All right, now I have my region of interest. How can I find my individual characters? For that, I'm gonna look at the number of white pixels per column. So, and then I'm gonna set a threshold and say, if the number of white pixels are higher than that threshold, that region probably has a character. So if I take it all the way to the up, a high threshold value, I get just pieces of the characters. If I go all the way down, or somewhere in between. Yeah, that looks good. So like five or 10 works well. Now I have my individual characters. Once I have my individual characters, I can use a simple correlation algorithm to find out which characters are these. So that's do the lab. Let's look at the code that's running underneath that app now. Okay, so we have seen the app. We use the imread function to read the file into Mallow. Then we use imshow to show the picture. So in this case, I'm using a grayscaling image to start with, but a grayscale image saved in the RGB format. So I still need to turn that RGB numbers, those three numbers, red, green, and blue numbers, into a single number of grayscale number. So I use the RGB to gray function. And if I look at the maximum number in that image, I see that it's 255 and the minimum is zero. And that's what we expect. And this is the grayscale version of that image. Now, Looking at that grayscale image, we create the histogram using the histogram command. And from here, we can see a distinct values. Like these values are dark pixels, and these values are light pixels. So if we set our threshold somewhere here, like 100, it gives us a really nice black and white image. From that black and white image, now I'm looking at the white count per row. How many white pixels are in a row? And I use the sum command to do that. See this second input in the sum command? It says, don't sum over the columns, but sum over the rows. Second dimension is rows in Mala. Once I have that, I can plot this. And I can see that there are like one, two, three, four, five regions that I may be interested in. Those regions have white pixels, more white pixels than the rest of the image. So those probably have some interesting features. Now looking at these, I use the algorithm which says the widest one is probably the one that's containing 
the letters. And if I look at this black and white image, that's how it is, right? This part has some white pixels, this has white pixels, and this has white pixels, and the borders have white pixels. But the largest one, the widest portion, contains the characters. So that's what I do. Once I recognize which regions have interesting features, I pick the largest one. I use the diff operation and I choose the maximum difference between the edges and that gives me the region of interest. Now I have my region of interest. I have the rows that I'm interested in. I need to figure out which columns of this region of interest has the individual letters. To do that, I look at the white count per column and I again use the sum, but this time I use comma one, which says, Dear Mala, please sum this matrix over the first dimension, which is the columns. Once I get that, you can see this red line shows the number of white pixels per column. I can set my threshold to five. If a column has more than five pixel, assume that has a character in it. And then I get the regions out of that. And from those regions, I can find the edges of the regions and then find the characters. So the first one is this picture. It's the picture of the character J. Now, how am I gonna find what that is as a letter? So I have my templates. So I have images, representative images for each character that I'm interested in. I'm going to use an algorithm that looks for the difference between a template image and my character that I recognized. So a distance, a 1D distance is basically absolute value of x minus 1, right? In 2D, we sum the squares and then take the square root, and that's the distance in 2D. It's basically the Pythagorean theorem. And if we have ND, we use the normal operation. So we basically sum the squares of each component and take the square root of that. Now we have a 2D image. So we need to compare each pixel and find the distance. When we do that between J and O, the normalized distance is 0 0.34, 50 apparently. Now I need to compare this J image to all of my templates. And that gives me this plot. And here it is, J gives us, gives us the smallest distance. So I say, this picture is the picture of character J. And then I do this for all the letters. Once I'm done, I have my list number. That concludes our exploration of the simple license plate recognition algorithm. I can hear some of you saying, nowadays modern systems use deep learning to recognize characters. That's true. Deep learning systems are very powerful in recognizing handwritten characters, where the characters can differ from person to person a lot. But for a license plate, where the characters are very well defined, we don't really need such a complex system. A simple system like this can do the job. Remember, engineering is all about solving a problem with the least amount of complexity. And as always, we can improve this algorithm. If you have ideas on how we can improve this algorithm, please put them in the comment section. If you have questions, also put them in the comment section, and I will try to answer them. I also included uh, the link to my blog where I provided the materials, the code, and the app. You know the drill about like, notifications, and uh, subscriptions. Thank you for watching, and keep exploring.